Maroon's Leaves. If you're new here, howdy. We talk about uh, general houseplant care on this channel. And so today I am going to be talking about my Ikea miniature greenhouse that I decided to purchase. This purchase all started with the purchase of this black velvet alocasia I found um, at a nursery near me. And I wouldn't consider this a really rare house plant. However, I would consider it a little bit harder to care for than some of my other house plants that I own. So in order to make sure that it stays happy and healthy, I wanted to provide it an environment to do so. So I have this one here. I also have a Venus flytrap that I recently purchased. I have tried to keep carnivorous plants alive in the past without success because of humidity levels. I mean, you need the humidity almost through the roof, hence why I decided to purchase like an enclosed area for that plant. So he came after the black velvet alocasia. And then my most recent purchase, because I now have the space for it in this um, terrarium greenhouse, is my alocasia fry deck. And he just popped a new leaf. There's one of them when they look a little darker. A little bit older and this leaf came pretty much um, on its way out when I purchased the plant when I got it in the mail and so now I would say it's pretty much officially done and I will be removing that leaf um, from the plant a couple little areas too where we're gonna get some new growth so this is the greenhouse setup as it is to date um, right now I only have these three plants and these are the three plants that are going to continue to be in here for the time being I do have this black velvicacia, velvicacia, black velvet alocasia planted in or rooted in some leca. So they're kind of like little clay um, beads and balls. I'm kind of learning a little bit more about leca as I go. Um, so that'll probably be in another video in the future. And right now I'm seeing a little bit of white fuzz on the top here. So not exactly thrilled with that result, but I think I have a solution for that. And um, that being said, the only thing in here is a little container of water that is helping keep up the humidity. And since I cannot fit a humidifier in here, and then I also have a little bit of driftwood, some rocks and some sphagnum moss. So I am going to be removing everything from the terrarium. And my general plan right now is to first hot glue it to the base because if you're not aware of this greenhouse, when you lift up in this area, the base comes off. So I'm gonna try to fix that. It probably would be a better choice to epoxy it or um, use some sort of silicone seal around the bottom. But you know, we don't have time for that today. So I'm going to hot glue it to it um, and hopefully that'll work. I also have a plan to add some more sphagnum moss. This is pre-dried sphagnum moss, so I'm going to be wetting it before it goes into the terrarium, or I guess greenhouse, I should call it, into the greenhouse. I also have this sphagnum moss, which is in there now. So this is the sphagnum moss that I purchased in order to keep the black velvet alocasia happy off of Amazon. This is from um, Lowe's. So two types of sphagnum moss going in. I also have some reindeer moss just to add a little bit of a different texture i think i'll be putting that in there some additional rocks and i might put a base of leca down before everything else goes in just so that way it has some sort of um solid bottom to it but we'll see what i decide as i go so i will not make you sit through the deconstruction of this and i'm going to uh, speed everything up so here we go Right, I'm pretty much finished with the greenhouse now. I built up a lot more of the areas with some more moss, rocks, things like that. And I'm pretty happy with the results. I might do a little bit of tweaking later on. This is the aftermath of everything, if you were wondering. 
So a couple of leaves I've trimmed off, um, some sphagnum moss I didn't use. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with the end result. Something I wanted to talk about is things that I've added to the greenhouse since purchasing it. So I'm not knocking Ikea in any way, but I think we all know that when it comes to constructing a piece of furniture ourselves, we're not experts and sometimes they can end up being a little bit rickety. And because they're mass produced, some of the pieces might not fit together as well as something that's handmade um, that you might purchase on Etsy. So just to show an example here, I did not put together these panes of the greenhouse. They were already put together. Um, all I had to do was slide all four sides on um, into these little slots right here and then it all fit together as far as that goes. But this pane on the top that you can lift up doesn't really um, flush with this pane over here. So that's something that might not bother you, but I wanted to make sure the seal on my greenhouse was really tight just so that way I don't have to worry about um, humidity levels as much and so I decided to add some rubber window seal so I purchased this rubber window seal from Lowe's a couple weeks ago I've used almost all of it and I might use a little bit more it was pretty affordable I think around seven bucks and so just purchasing something that's seven dollars to give me a little bit more peace of mind really helped and I have it added on this edge in the center here, there was a really large gap between these two pieces, as well as on the back. I have sealed this window in entirely, so I can't even lift this up really anymore. A little bit on this side because I decided not to seal this side completely, which is something I might change um, in a little bit. But I wanted to be able to give you guys a tour of the greenhouse before that point. Um, so rubber window seal has helped been has been helping keep up the humidity in the greenhouse So to get into the greenhouse a couple of things I built up a little bit of the areas with this reindeer moss and sphagnum moss added the um, Driftwood back in everything seems like it's pretty happy in here I did clip off a lot of the dead growth off of the Venus flytrap. I added back in the water and some rocks, but everything is a lot more built up than it was before, which was my goal. And I think even has enough room for maybe one more plant, possibly two, if they're on the smaller side. And I can already see, I did give it a little bit of a spray before showing you guys, but the sphagnum moss that I wet is already forming some humidity in there. So it's starting to build up, which is really nice for all my plants. So I'm not going to worry about them um, as much as I was before. Additionally, you probably see the reflection. I have purchased a fan for inside the greenhouse. So this fan came from Amazon. It has a few different speeds and it's rechargeable. So there is a little bit of a cover that goes over these little um, openings here so you don't have to worry about water getting inside. The cover did fall off when I pulled it out. So that is lying around here somewhere. I gotta find it and put it back on there again. But it does have three speeds. And I think this, the, um, I was gonna say the quietest speed, but the speed where it's the slowest, I think is probably best for the plants just because they are in such close proximity to the fan. I don't wanna be damaging them at all. And I just put one of those handy dandy 3M strips that has Velcro over here and then one on the back of my fan so I can just pull it in and out of the greenhouse. Hold on, I cannot do this one handed. I'll have to put it in at a different time, but um, I can put it in there. It can be running and that is for air circulation. So something that I was also worried about was humidity leaving the greenhouse because it is a little bit more affordable and not as sturdy as maybe some greenhouses that you would purchase on Etsy um, or from a private seller of some type or uh, maybe a nursery. I wanted to seal it up. But I also wanted the airflow to be constantly moving because all that humidity can really bring in pests as well as soil. So some of you might be wondering why I haven't been using soil in this terrarium slash greenhouse. And that's because the sphagnum moss is going to, one, help keep the humidity levels up and two, really, really help with um, keeping pests from not 
making this their home because we don't we're not interested in that we want our plants to be happy and healthy and we do not want any pests in here so hence why I've added a lot of moss to help prevent that from happening so hopefully this works out I will keep you guys updated via Instagram most likely on how everything is moving along I've had the black velvet alocasia here in this greenhouse setup for almost a month now and it's been doing really really well I think it's even going to do better because I added some more moss um, the fan will be running a little bit more because I'm going to keep a better eye on it and it has some new plant buddies in there for it to kind of uh, thrive off of as well so hopefully this all works out and you've learned something from this or if you're interested in getting one of the IKEA greenhouses I would recommend it they're really affordable this was around twenty dollars I think I spent six to seven dollars on the rubber window seal I think I spent another ten to twelve on this fan I'll have everything linked below um, it also you can move it around which is something I really like um, so I can adjust where the fan is being um, blown onto or what uh, plants the fan is being blown onto inside the greenhouse. So all said and done, um, it was around $40 for this whole setup without the plants. So I'm including sphagnum moss and um, reindeer moss, all the rocks um, were from the dollar store, the driftwood pieces and all the plants. This would probably be around a $100 setup and I'm eyeballing it for you. It depends on where you purchase your plants from. So my black velvet alocasia was around 20, uh, 20 to 25 dollars. I cannot remember specifically, but it all depends on where you purchase your plants from. Again, this was a rare find, so that was something I was okay with. And the um, alocasia fry deck was also 25 dollars. So that's 50 dollars in plants right there. Uh, Aldi actually supplied me with my lovely, um, what is he called? Oh my gosh, Venus flytrap. <laughs> Aldi provided the Venus flytrap and he's been doing really well. I've killed carnivorous plants in the past just because I haven't um, had high enough humidity in my home and I've also not known how to feed them appropriately. So I've been doing a lot of research and I think the blood worms should work out well for this little guy. I will, again, keep you informed on how he is doing and how the blood worms are working out for us. So I just wanted to finish up here with a little update on the IKEA greenhouse. It's been a solid few days since I have planted everything up in here and the humidity levels are doing really well. I've been spraying it um, about every three days or so and I just wanted you guys to get a better close-up on some of the plants in here. I also decided to add a begonia near the um, Venus flytrap. So there is a begonia right over here. I'm going to pan on it in between the fry deck and the Venus flytrap. So this is everything and uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope this helped.